Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to uh, Las Vegas Market and Shopping with Sarah. Um, today we have Sarah and Leslie Stroh with Rug News and Design, and they will be sharing with us today um, the information on custom rugs and what we can expect and what to look for in custom rugs. This is CEU approved, so if you are joining us and need that accreditation, um, it will be emailed out to you tomorrow. So at this time, Sarah, go ahead and take it away. Thank you, Kim. Welcome. Um, good afternoon. So this is our part three, Shopping with Sarah. Our part one was um, fibers of rugs. Part two was um, construction of rugs, and this is custom rugs. A couple quick things for people who are joining us for, for the first time. One, we are sitting, as we all are, in our homes. Um, it is summertime, so we have our doors open, and hopefully our dogs won't bark, and my child won't interrupt. Um, they've sort of been trained not to, but that doesn't really work very well. Um, there is one video in this um, presentation, and just so everybody knows, if they haven't heard before, um, the videos usually have my son's voice in the background because they were taken when I was traveling through India with him doing both research on rugs and research on and, and being a parent. So I just wanted to let you know that that is my son in the background. Um, and we are going to get started. Please, if you have any questions, um, I believe Kim is monitoring the question part, but please ask as we go along. Um, custom rugs are slightly different conversation because because it is a custom program and custom different things for different projects will be slightly different so what we are talking about is a hold on one moment um, your phone is upstairs on my desk sorry um, so one of the things about custom is we're going to talk about sort of the overview of custom um, and we can get into more detail, but there's three parts of custom rugs, size, design, and color. And we're going to talk it in order of size, design, and color. And one of the things that was interesting um, that Delos Rugs had told us said when they started doing their custom program, they had used the term made to order instead of custom. And now as time has passed, the term custom rugs has become more popular. So made to order or custom, both are taking one and making it special and the main question when we start with size is what we're going to talk about is the types of rugs used in custom so our machine woven broad loom machine tufted hand tufted hand woven and hand knotted now we're talking on the residential end so let's remember that commercial um custom rugs are different uh due to due to quite a few factors what i first want to talk about is the broad loom in uh, residential is what in my what I grew up knowing and so I use the term badly but wall-to-wall -wall carpeting that is a form of broad loom but now what a lot of people are doing is taking what was considered wall-to-wall -wall and having it cut to size um, to fit a room so that the wood underneath can still show so just in my experience I sometimes have the misconception of wall-to-wall -wall and broad them. It is, it is, how do I say it? Remember that that is broad loom, but when you cut it down to size to a room and have it for smaller so you can show the wood, that is still considered broad loom. Machine tufted, you can have really high quality machine tufted and have it used as a custom rug for a space and it can look just as good as a hand knotted, but it you have more possibilities because of dye and sizing. Um, same with hand tufted and hand woven. Now I've starred hand knotted and the important thing to realize about hand knotted is that it is not count. So if you take a design that is a eight by 10 and do it in an oversize, you're basically, even though you like the design or even the color, the fact that you're just changing the size of that hand knotted, you're actually having to start at the beginning because they have to redo the um, mapping and they have to find a, a lot of times a different loom it will be done on the same loom so doing a hand knotted custom especially if it's just changing the size is still a big project it takes a longer period of time and 
I think my father would agree that when you do a machine tufted, a really dense machine tufted or hand tufted, you can actually get a quality almost at a faster speed time than hand, hand knotted. So the main question you want to ask when you're working with a customer is why do you want a custom rug? What is missing that you feel the need to get a custom rug? And that I'll jump in and say, that is the critical question. Why do you want a custom rug? Is it size? Is it design? Is it color? And it may be all three, but this, or is it you've looked and you can't find anything that you like? That may be the fourth question. But these questions have to be answered because all custom rugs take time. Some take a few weeks, some take many months. And so that's a factor in the decision process. So we are going to go on to, okay, so we're talking about the cut, which is the size first. And the main thing to realize about that is you have your standard size and then you can, what's great about the custom cut is that you can have a design, a colorway that you like, and they can change and adapt it to your needs. And some of the terms you need to know, especially if you're trying to find somebody someplace, is a carpet workroom. A carpet workroom is anybody that really does broadloom, most of them will have a carpet for their surging, which as you can see is wrapping the edge in a circle. So that binding at the end, and then binding is the fabric. I will tell you, I am notorious for switching those two words around. I get yelled at by my father a lot about that. So it's okay if you make a mistake in talking about it, just make sure that when you're communicating, if you're not sure to just clarify it. It, it takes no time at all, but it is something that there are two different ways to finish the rug on the edge. And I have made the mistake of saying it sometimes. Um, and I'll jump in again. I talked recently to a retailer who carries both knotted rugs and broadloom, high-end broadloom. And they asked what their percentage was, and they said about 60% of their broadloom is sold as installed, and 40% is sold as custom cut and bound. So they're the, a good higher-end retailer of broadloom will be familiar with uh, bound rugs as well as uh, installed rugs. So the option is yours. Okay, so just those are some terms to remember. Now what we're going to take a look at is a custom cut by, the, by Daylin, and what they've been working on is a program called the Taylor Program, which is taking, if you know Daylin rugs and you knew their custom program, they had a traditional way where they showed one rug with four different sizes and a carpet blanket. They now have changed it to focus on size <coughs> and with over 200 samples in a rack, a, like a tree. But what they're talking really about is they're taking 21 different collections and they're able to cut it to your size. Now there is a limit on what size they can do, but it's basically a 15 to by 25, a 15 by 15 and a 14 by 25 is the largest they can go. And if you really think about that, that is a pretty big space. And the way they're doing it is they, um, they cut from the back. And if you look in the upper left-hand corner, you can see the machine, he's doing it. And then the face is hand trimmed, so they're actually taking, they take scissors and they double check, and then they surge by hand. So, and when you say surge by hand, if you actually look at it, here's the mis machine, but there's a hand going in. So make no mistake, even when you are working on a machine rug and then having it cut, that cutting process is hand done. So there's a lot of hands that will check against it. And this is a great option when you're talking about custom and somebody really likes the design or the pattern, just find a company like to, that can change the size. What I have seen a lot in the marketplace over the years, and I kind of, I really am impressed with designers who go and say, oh, I made this custom rug for somebody. And I'm like, wow, I'm pretty sure I've seen that design in a rug with a company but it had been the wrong size. And that's not a problem now. There's so many companies that are the ability to cut and surge. Um, so here's a question. When you do see a rug um, through a dealer or something, ask them about different sizing. A lot of times 
a the company can change can adapt it to your size so it's always a good question to ask if you really like the design or color now here's a, another example of a custom cut by Delos and what they've been doing is they're doing oversized rugs and as you can see in the upper left corner um, that the cut right there is not it's not straight and that's because when they make a rug they have they like to have it go with the pattern so when they hand sew it as you see this woman doing it does two things one it doesn't show up as as much but also it reinforces the strength that changes how the pull of the rug is because of that and so this is important to realize again um no, it's hand done and, and hand -tipped. I mean, this is high quality work. Now, Delos is a company that does more than just, my apologies, um, that would be the dog working at FedEx. Um, so what we are looking at here, and what's important is a company like Delos works with a lot of residential and commercial. But what they have found is that they can have a stock program or and be able to customize it by size because they have the skill set and they've trained people to hand sew and then they will um, surge or bind the edge depending on the customer's needs. So those are two different ways that you can do a um, cut and cut to size. Do you have anything to add about cut? Yeah, I mean, when you're looking at this, I mean, when you want a very big rug, Everybody has ultimately a limit. It's generally uh, 14 to 16 feet wide. And beyond that, they have to sew it together. Now, Delos is in the airline business, and there it's not width, it's length. And on the airplane in the aisle, they don't really like a cut because it will give eventually because of all the foot traffic. So you know, they, they can make a, a very, they're structured for a very long rug and uh, also quite a wide rug. Other people in the business have the same pretty much limitation. The Broadland business is pretty much limited to a 15 foot wide loom, uh, a machine made Broadland. So there's, when you get above 15 feet in width, uh, you're starting to get into the necessity of cut, uh, of, of um, custom. So my comment is that always widths under 15 foot are, there's a lot more availability than there is widths over 15 foot. Length is rarely a problem, except a mechanical problem of finishing and the work you're doing. It. That's one comment. The second comment is when we did this uh, Made in the USA article where these pictures came from, and we looked at a lot of uh, companies that make custom in the USA, I was amazed with all of my experience that I did not realize how much hand work went into every machine made rug. All right, a tremendous amount of handling, um, even in an area rug that's made on a machine, that all the finishing is done by hand. So it's, it's not, when we say machine, it's actually, the wrong thing to think of it as a cookie cutter. It's actually may have nine to 15 people working on it. I, I add that in uh, from my own experience. And all these articles are in back issues of Rug News and Design under recent issues on our website. So a great example, and then we'll go on, is um, when we say machine, think of the Pillsbury cookie dough roll that you can buy in the grocery store. You know, the dough's all made, it's all there, nicely packaged, but when you get it home, you still have to cut it and put it on the cookie sheet. Same idea here. It's, it's one level package, but the rest is all hand done. So let's move on to our, as I get the, I can't find my, there we go. So, the next one is design. And the reason I've gone to design before color is because design is an area where a lot of customers will say, I, I don't see the design that I want. And design is actually a mixture probably of design and cut. Um, and I say that because you might need a design for a specific area like your staircase. Um, you wanna have a fire, uh, something to go around your hearth or, um, 
structurally you need to be able to open doors or there's a pillar in the middle of an old warehouse building and you're putting a rug around it. So the important thing to realize here is you that is a long process. Um, there's, you want to first draw it, then you convert it, then you go back and you talk about choice of colors, placement of colors, all these um, parts. So it is a much longer process with the design and there are some companies that do an amazing job of taking your hand drawing and being able to turn it into a concept and into a rug. And in the past when I have talked to artists that have been brought in by different companies to take their art and transfer it to a rug, and I said, how easy was it to do? Um, and they always say, oh, it wasn't that bad. And then you start talking to them more and they, and they realize that they had to adjust certain aspects of their art or their drawings to work within the perimeters of constructions of your rug. Um, so it, that is something to think about when you are designing a rug. And I will say this again about design. If you're talking about geometric patterns or florals, really t dive deep into what's available already in the marketplace. Because if it's only about cut or color, that's option that there's possibilities to change it. There are a ton of designs out there. A great example, though, of when a rug needs to be specially designed, um, Mirza Design had to come up with a rug, which you're going to see in the upper left, a sketch of what the client and the designer were trying to work around. Clearly, the white space is, has a purpose. <clears throat> and then they wanted the design to work out from that. So the first part, you're seeing the sketch. They have some basic measurements. And then we have what the Mirza Company Designs took that sketch and turned it into a CAD. Some of the important things you have to realize that when you're working with a company like Mirza is some, some of the standards that you should be looking for is Mirza Design, a great example, and we love talking to them about custom because they have really worked hard on, on working with clients and coming up with systems in place to make sure that what you envision turns around and comes out. So Mirza, when they do it, they will have two strike offs and two sets of palms and the palms are your colors. Um, and that is so that both the client gets a strike off in the set of palms and then Mirza has a set of palms and a, and a strike off so it so they can constantly check against it. So when you get your CAD, you will have, as you see here, you have a drawing and now you're talking about, this is a custom rug that was made in Thai, by, for a client in Thailand. Now, what remember we talked about the color, saturation, all that, that's what this discussion is up here. So that means that this drawing, which they've rendered, matched what, what wanted to be done. And now they're talking about the silk, dark red outline, and all of this information. Okay, and this is the final product. And one of the things that you have to understand is it is, um, there are some challenges when making a custom rug. So the most challenging, if you can imagine, um, is to design and make a stair runner. The reason being when you do stair runners and you really wanna work with somebody who knows stair runners is because you're gonna have your, the geometry, the mathematics, designs, color, and then it take into account traffic. So custom stair runners are probably one of the higher areas of-, of Harder. They are the hardest, especially on a curving staircase, um, to make it all fit. This is only for specialist installers and only for people um, with experience in making stair runners or, or designing stair runners. This is not, an, this is not for your average um, manufacturer. Um, it requires a specialist. Uh, always requires a specialist to know how much the edge, the nose of the stair tread will actually require in fabric so that the pattern works all the way up. I mean, I mean I've seen great work, but um, I also know uh, the people that do it, um, how difficult it is, particularly on a turn and a landing and a rise. Right. So even if you're doing a full design custom for a rug, for stairs, very hard, but n don't misjudge that just cutting for a custom cut for a staircase, if your your staircase is not a common stair, 
case, do talk to the person cutting and see and see pictures of work they've done before. Um, so now I'm sort of going through this because what I really want to do is is talk about each of these areas and then have a dialogue about how they sort of all work together. Um, here is a the color and I did a project with my son's second grade class a couple years ago where I presented them with just black uh, drawings, a black and white drawing of rugs, and I let the kids pick them. And what you can see here is actually a couple things took place was one, I had to transfer that picture that I printed off on a just standard um, piece of paper into a bigger two by three piece um, poster board. So the drawings, one, we hand drew them there so the design is slightly different. But what's more, even more interesting is that these groups of children did not see what the rug color was before getting it. And then they picked their own colors um, as a group. So color can change a pattern, a design immensely. Um, so you might see a design, a rug, and you love me like, oh, I want this color to match. And my favorite example is canary yellow. Canary yellow is incredibly beautiful, bright and bold, and looks great on wallpaper as part of a fl flower or a bird or on a pillowcase. As soon as you want to take that canary yellow and put it in a rug and you're not seeing the canary yellow you want, you're like, ooh, let's make our own canary yellow. The reality is color is the hardest part of a rug to the dyeing of the color. And the reason being is that you can dye if you have wool lots. So a wool lot, if you dye, can be one color yellow, but if you go to another wool lot, it will be a slightly, <coughs> excuse me, different color yellow. So if you really need a custom color, I'm gonna make the suggestion that you then go and look and talk to a few companies that do custom color. Um, Mirza Design has over 30,000 color palms. Um, many other companies have thousands that they, they can use or in stock. And so designing your own color, your own custom color, is not for the faint-hearted. Um, I want to jump in because one of the things, I mean, I always use the example of um, uh, ice cream sherbet colors um, and that's your canary yellow falls into that wool comes wool is never white wool starts at light at, at a white cream like milk and goes all the way to heavy cream uh, or butter uh, and wool from a sheep makes the same pretty much range so when you're dying you're starting with as Sarah said you're starting with the basic yarn um, really white yarn uh, is hard to get and expensive, but that's what your starting point is. You start with a different color yarn, you get a different color yellow, and um, it's it's and the other side of this is that the saturation level of the yellow. Um, I once designed a rug when I first came into the business, um, and I had one color that was twice or three times the saturation level of all the other colors in the rug. And it stuck out, stuck out like painting um, bright red in a, in a, a, a sherbet, um, a raspberry sherbet uh, uh, ice cream cone. I mean, it just was ugly. No two ways about it, didn't work. So balancing color is part of the job as well as picking color. And so now when you get to synthetics, nylon in particular, uh, nylon is the one synthetic you can dye in a normal way. Um, there you can get a white, a really pure white, and you can control the color a lot better um, than otherwise. But most synthetic fibers are um, solution dyed because they're extruded, they don't take color on the surface. You have to put color into the solution from which they're extruded in the beginning. So to get uh, synthetic fibers dyed um, is much more difficult than to get natural fibers dyed. 
And the other thing you should also, when talking about dyeing in color, especially custom color, is one of a great way to decide if you really want a color, and I have found, is actually to, if again, I love the canary yellow and the thread. Wrap the thread, stitch the thread, have a um, paint can done, and then paint a board with that color and just see how bold a different color is. Um, if you really like, you know, talk to a company who's, who is making something and you're like, oh, I really want to switch the red and the blue so it's reverse. Ask first. You would be surprised when you ask the, the, the simple questions of, can I switch this? Is it possible? They're either going to say yes, no, or you know what, let's go check. Two are positive, one's negative, and if it's one's negative, I mean, you're, you're kind of winning there because then you can say, okay, I now know what my next step is. Um, there's two types of dyeing. There's bat dyeing, um, which is, we are going to show a video of both putting yarn into a huge bat and or a carpet. And the, so yarn would be used in your hand tufting uh, products. The carpet would be done in more your machine. And uh, as we showed Dalen, the example of Dalen earlier, of a pre-made that then is cut down to size. Um, solution dyeing is what's used on synthetic fabrics. It's a slight variation um, in term, but it's not something you really need. To, it's not too important. Um, but here you go. So here's um, some selections of palms. So one of the things you should know also is when you're looking at a palm, and I'm going to ask you to look to the upper left-hand corner. What you can see is the purples and pinks. Notice how they're sort of poofed out, which means they're loose. So the looser the tufted rug, the lighter the color. But if you take, and if you can see, <coughs> excuse me, sometimes the palms are really tight. So the tighter the palm and the denser, it makes it denser of the fat yarn, the darker that color is. So you could actually have the same color, let's say pink, but it's showing up differently when it's, when it's open and when it's closed. So that is actually something when you're choosing color to go into a custom rug, you also wanna look at if you're designing your own rug is how dense you want the wool to be. And then also if you're looking at the color, just choose your colors in a pre-designed one, also make sure your palm is matching how loose or how dense that yarn is gonna be in the rug. Yeah, and I'll come here because this is, clearly a problem that everybody has with palms. Um, so that's why you put them in between your index finger and uh, your thumb, and then you tighten it down. If you're having a high, highly dense carpet, I'd grab one of those palms and squeeze it as tight as I could. And it would change, oh, from uh, medium light to, to dark um, right there. The other way is people make a mistake in handling color is they look at the side of the yarn versus the cut. When you see a palm, you're seeing it from the cut side and the pile reacts to density. So side versus cut, you cannot pick a color from the side color without seeing a palm. Um, one of the ways people are now trying to describe color when they talk to a designer is to actually go into a paint store and pick out the paint colors uh, they want from a major brand. A lot of companies now coordinate their colors to um, Benjamin Moore, I know. Uh, a lot of companies have those colors in their system uh, as, as so they can uh, duplicate the color on their screens when they're designing. And there's one other and I can't remember who it is. But uh, dealing with a palm and that rack of palms where you have all the colors one next to the other, it's very difficult um, to decide which five colors go together at the same level of density. So you need a, at this point, you're really into professional country. And one of the things I will also say with color is um, if you're doing a custom color, so the design is available and you can choose the color, is get samples. Um, again, I'm thinking back to Dalen only because I just recently helped a friend do it. They wanted to replace some um, broadloom, cut broadloom in their home, and they were thinking of going from green to blue. Okay, doesn't seem like a big decision, but they've actually ordered about 10 samples of different colors and different different weaves, um, constructions. 
one of the pe deciding p people, two people who were deciding wanted a specific construction, but the color didn't match that. So I said, just get the samples of the color because you might be shocked sometimes you think construction in one way, but once you see the color, it's available and you approve the construction. So remember, and that same color could be used in a different way in a different construction and it totally changes the look of the color as um, Leslie was just saying. So the reason I say I brought color last, it is, is actually in my mind the hardest one when you're dealing in custom. So here is that dyeing, and I took this video at the OBT factory in India with my son. So when you hear the child in the back room, that is my son. And just so you know, we are in a factory. He had like two or three Indian um, staff watching him. He was in no way in trouble, and it is not standard to have a child in the factory. They made an exception for me because I was being both parent and working, and they knew, they knew me well enough to know that I wouldn't let anything happen. So here's a video, um, let me. Well, before she turns the video on, notice the colors of those yarns. That's undyed wool. Yeah, it's undyed wool, but notice that one is white and one has a grayish brown to it, right? And it may be just where the light is and how close it is to the camera, and it may just be that we're looking at a warehouse, but that's the range of, of yarn color that you can expect to find in any, uh, any warehouse. Oop, let me, uh, excuse me, go back. Okay, here we go. And I will not be talking through it because I have to... So I'm just going to pause it um, so I can talk to you a little bit about what you're seeing, but I also want you to hear the noise. So these are called vats, okay? There is, it, it's machine done all by, but it's done by hand and the process is slow and fast in the sense that it's fast that it's not hand, complete hand done but it also just watch and listen and imagine and this is for your stock program so imagine if you were to do custom coloring how different and how important it is that to do in a smaller load that's why they don't make custom colors in small batches it's actually not as easy as you think Sorry, I'm late. Mm, excuse me, I wanted to show you something on that video. Let me just um, pull it forward. So this is what I wanted to quickly show you. What he's doing here is to the left is the vat. Here is, so they will lift it up and it moves over to drain here and to drip it and it, if it goes back in there. Otherwise this is, so it moves between the two and this gentleman is working with this color, which means he would have to know what color he is seeing here, if it needs more dipping, if it doesn't. So this gentleman is doing much more than just moving a button. His knowledge of that color and saturation will be pretty high. And what you're seeing in front of it is um, actually, a, that is a dyed color. It was a different dye on the other side, so. Hold it a minute. Okay. If you look carefully at this um, dye lot, you can see that the fourth one from the fourth one or fifth one, fifth of Hank from the right is lighter. Move over one more. Next one is lighter than the one alongside of it. Don't know why. Now, the, the also this man, he's dying wet to a color that he has to understand dry. So it takes a lot of skill for him to eyeball wet yarn and know what it's going to look like as dry yarn. This is where the dye master or the assistant dye master, as this, this person is, has to have not technical knowledge, he has to recognize color. And when you get into the business of recognizing color, you I failed a color test in a textile company once because I couldn't match color accurately enough. And it's, it's that I just saw this picture and saw the, the shade of, of, of light green being variants. But so 
appreciate that these are highly skilled guys shifting from one vat to another. I mean, you look at the colors you're seeing there. The, the one on the right is highly saturated. The one on the ground is medium saturated. And here we have what I call a sherbet color. Okay. I'm going to go on so it can see it. I'm just going to add one thing while you're doing it. You're seeing a lot of water. Um, OBT is known for their water treatment plant where this water goes, gets cleaned, processed, and actually then the water goes out to the fields and the, the dye lot actually gets dried and reused. It is a huge other process, but just be aware if you stay at the water that it is recycled and reused. And OBT is the only company that I know of that is a full recycling plant and supplies drinkable water um, as a result of their reprocessing of, of water. Okay, this is inside a vat. So what you're going to see is actually the wool being dropped into the vat. What you just saw was wool that had been taken out of the vat and being checked and dried. Yeah. And you'll also see some numbers in a minute on the bottom that says how much wool can be done. So what you're going to see here is actually what they're doing is it's been dyed, it's been hung dry, and now they're taking it off the um, rack to switch it to a different drying, which is machine dry. I will say at this point, there are companies that will put their wool outside to dry in the sunlight. They're dyed, dyed yar yarn, and I wrote dyed yard, um, just noticed that one. Uh, and then there's companies like OBT that have drying machines. And the major difference is just the, the size of the company. Um, a drying machine is great for the rain season, so they can continue to build, um, dye their yarn.
So this is the drying machine that I was talking about and notice how much yarn is in there. Again, this is, it's a very big machine and there is a lot of yarn in there and I believe OBT has quite a few of these. I can't quite remember, but I did not see a machine like this in a bunch of the factories I visited. So it is, this is something you'll see in a larger factory. It does, <coughs> the difference of drying in the sun and drying in a machine is, is none. I mean, it's just like doing drying your laundry in a wash, in a dryer or in the sun. They both get dry. So here's just some still pictures of different yarn that have been dyed coming out of the vat. And I find them important to see because you can kind of get a sense of how much yarn is dyed at a time. So again, getting back to custom color is if you want to go custom color, you are going to pay a premium for doing a smaller dye lot. Here is a still shot of it. The trade-off here is with a company like OVT is their quality control um, is impeccable. And they do custom rugs, they do custom tufted rugs. And so your trade-off is between dye lots and quality control. Um, and the, one of the biggest uh, issues with any custom rug is that the colors match and the quality uh, of the production uh, is as uh, anticipated. So again, uh, was, what you're looking at here is an industrial scale company uh, in uh, 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 an artisanal business. Uh, still artisans involved, still extraordinarily knowledgeable people, but uh, the advantage here is uh, quality control. Uh, you know that you, you've got a reasonable assumption that the product will match the specifications. And what I also find interesting is you're gonna see, you see grad, gradation here of the brown. That is done intentionally. You also will see it in the next one. And what, what I find, here's a better example of the orange. The way they do that is remember how you saw the bat going down. So the person controlling that has to know when to slowly and stop and let it sit longer so that you get not only the gradation on this, but however many bats that they have to do. You also see it in the background here, you have some reds and browns. <laughs> that skill to be able to do that kind of grading is again, a technical skill that somebody has trained a very long time to do to be able to adjust the color. So if you are doing a custom design, you're like, ooh, that's really fun to do. I love that idea. Just realize again, the technical difficulty of doing gradation of color and then knowing the company that knows how to do it really well. So that is sort of, that is the vat dyeing um, for your, for yarn. What we have here is now through photos provided by Fabrica is when you're doing a vat dye of a machine made rug already. So the, you have like a grease, grease rug, white rug, and. Grease is the term for a rug that is undyed. Okay. Um, it also is uh, a term uh, that we use uh, uh, about uh, a color that, um, that a lot of people uh, like uh, have grayish as a, a non-colored rug. We've taken the a technical term for a woven fabric and applied it to a non-colored rug. Uh, all I want is grayish. So what you're going to see here is you're actually seeing a similar as bat. It's still a bat. Um, it's just that what you'll see is a rug and you can see behind the gentleman's head, the white haired gentleman with the blue cap, there is a rug in there. And that is the slight variation. The machine, these machines, this style machine is a much newer dyeing system than you would have had your yarn that was sort of built off of that. So on your right, what you'll also notice is that the colors is, <coughs> um, they can, for the pre-tufter, they can pick it. So you're not using as much color dye to do it. Um, it's what's fascinating here is that because the color in the rug is standard uh, or very close to standard uh, for each 
dialogue production system. They can by computer, it's not shown, I don't believe, but they can by computer um, adjust the color of the uh, liquor, they call it a liquor, that the dye material goes into at a terminal from this system and send the uh, dye liquor, the dye stuff to that, that, that back for dyeing the carpet. And that's all computer controlled by the shade the customer wants relative to the color palms that Fabrica has are all pre-coded into the computer. Um, it's, it, it's, again, it's material handling and there's a lot of technical people and technical skill involved. Right, so just that it's not, so getting back to the idea that if you're gonna take color and do it, you wanna, and you look at getting machine tufted rug because you might have more control over the option of a larger choice of rug color. Would you say that's correct? Yes. No, you always have infinite choice over on a hand knotted rug um, because you're dying so little, but infinite choice is a lot more complicated to deal with than finite choice. And so here, now what, we find fascinating here is here's rug dyeing in Afghanistan and currently we are doing a lot of work learning more about the Afghanistan process with Umar. No, this was in Pakistan. I'm sorry. Um, this was in, it was in, in Pakistan. Um, the picture was used in a rug uh, about Pakistan and Afghanistan and um, I didn't clarify, it's my fault. Okay, on the right. The great thing about working with father and daughter, we all make mistakes. Right, on the right, you see the dye book that's in the chest on the right, and you see those pots that are sitting above? This is by inherently by uh, a, a small lot dyer, right? He dyes maybe, oh, 40 or 50 kilos at a time. That's brick, the fire, you see the fire being under, the, uh, under it. Um, that's the dye master. There's the um, uh, dye stuff behind the white towel in his hand or the white object in his hand. This is, this is your basic artisanal small producer um, system. There's the rinse water in the, with the blue pipe, the greenish blue pipe. Um, this is the this is the heart of artisanal carpet making and you get great colors and they're experts but color control is very difficult and i would just want to add is that in this is where color and how color was done traditionally this is this is very much 500, 1,000, 2,000 years old. <laughs> and I've actually seen this put, um, done for textile um, that's in India. So, and also a small artisanal um, rug maker who is no longer in production. So it is, it is common. It's, it's, but as my father had said, quality control is going to be the hardest part of this. And unless you're ready to oversee every step and check in weekly and see pictures and colors, it's not for the faint hearted if you're gonna go with a smaller artisanal company because you have to be very much checking You have to in. be part of it, but it's not shown here, but when we did an article on Afghanistan, we noticed that um, all the people in the article had cell phones. Um, so the, uh, the presence of cell phones uh, has changed the ability to communicate um, with um, any of these producing countries and you can actually stay on top of your production uh, via cell phone. Maybe expensive, but you can stay on top of it. Um, and we had an incident here where a picture for, uh, for the magazine wasn't quite right and we, my wife picked up the phone, called the person that was giving us the picture and they from uh, Istanbul, Turkey, sent the original copy of the picture, and 15 minutes later, uh, we had uh, we had what we needed. But it used to take me six weeks to get an answer to a question like that. So um, I'm just going to bring us to here. So going back through, first of all, the articles that if you want to read up a little bit more on custom, what you have here is the listing of the last three years of where custom rugs have been talked about actually and a new world of design 
was not particularly on custom, but it was talking about color. And if we review what we've talked about, the cut um, size is probably the easiest aspect of custom, making a custom rug. So always ask that question um, as a retailer or as a designer working with a client, if they're not happy about something in the rug, I would say the first question to ask is, is the size the issue? Right. A lot of times it will be the size is the issue. Um, <clears throat> so that's a great way to sort of make it a little custom. Um, then is it the design? So either you can do a whole brand new design, which is great, but if they say, okay, what I would suggest is ask them to write it down or do it, be a sketch artist and write something. And then before you say, okay, let's go directly to custom, maybe look at a bunch of different companies to see if there's something similar that they can adjust the color or the cut. Um, design again is a, the actual design, recreating and making your own design is a fabulous way to do it. It is, can be a fast process. If it's hand knotted, it is gonna be a longer process. So one of the things when you're talking about design, designing a custom rug is how, when do you really want it? I think it's another question when you're talking about custom. If somebody's willing to wait two years, go right ahead, do a, do a hand knot it. If somebody's saying, I want it within six months, start looking at more of the machine tufted options there. Um, if Yeah, but cut, I mean, look, there's a lot of good broad loom out there. So cut and bound works for many, many uh, solutions. Um, and when we say re, uh, a, a consumer, you know, Main Street uh, office, the doctor's office, the lawyer's office, those are places where um, you can use a broad loom piece with cut and bound. Um, it's a lot, if the floors are decent, um, it's probably the best solution. And I'm actually gonna add in there is that what I noticed when we walked um, market a couple years ago, and I was learning more about the commercial and of just Broadloom right. and then going into Broadloom. Broadloom design and pattern within Broadloom is pretty incredible. So you can actually, you might not have actually looked at it before or you thought area rug, but you can actually go, go into some, go into your local flooring store and check out the options of Broadloom. Right. Because that's where you can really get the cut and you can bring design or do a big Broadloom and then Make, get a smaller area rug on top and do layering. And that's a great way to give that custom, just a custom look. Right. Um, because see, uh, I, my background is not, a, uh, it takes, you know, six, nine, 12 months uh, to do a, a product. And w you're paying in custom, what you're paying for is not speed. You're paying for the time it takes to set the, all the pre, pre starting work. Um, somebody that has a programmed line is amortizing the design work and they're dying over a number of rugs. So you're, you're getting into um, bespoke custom, which is always the highest price of anything, um, but not every situation needs it. I'm coming around to that printing, and I experimented with it, and I've written, we've written articles on it. You can do high-end printing, not cheap, but better, you have color control, still problematical, but printing is getting better. The quality of printing has improved substantially, it, but it's coming into the hotel hospitality world. If the hospitality business is a little soft this year, and it looks like it might be, um, all of a sudden I think you're gonna see um, those machines uh, being dedicated to area rugs. So, you know, we're, the business of rugs is a business. And so look at it from the point of view of solving the problem um, with something the consumer, the customer uh, will be happy with. Um, we, we, love, we love the product, um, but the customer loves the solution. So I'm gonna add this is because one of the reasons my father and I bounce each other off the wall sometimes is his technical knowledge of 40 odd years is immense. And I actually look at rugs very much from, that's why it's shopping with Sarah, is how to shop it. And as a 40 something year old mother, um, also I sort of am biased on the idea that I wouldn't ever think to walk into a flooring showroom to look for an area rug or, or a rug that's bound 
So my suggestion to you is also maybe present and get some samples that you know is broad loom, that you know can be wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, but present it as we can custom cut this. Because I know in my own, for myself and my friends, as soon as we start talking about stuff like that, I shut down and I go, but that's not what I want. And what I realized was when I saw it at trade shows was a lot of that broad loom that is residential commercial actually would work in my home. I, but I immediately shut down. So when you're, when you're talking about custom and when you're talking about the rug, it is an option, um, but get samples of it to show them so that they visually see it and they're not just verbally hearing it because you might get roadblocks if you verbally talk about um, machine broadloom. And what, what, you know, it's true in broadloom, hasn't changed. Um, beige is the common color and it's 80% of the stuff that they sell in broadloom and it's either light beige or dark beige. Um, but they all have samples of uh, other products that I keep trying to sell and some ex excellent designs. I mean, I've seen excellent designs in the, um, say, periphery of the Broadloom business. And that can make a great custom rug. And you can fabricate that rug. There are people that can take a piece of Broadloom from one uh, collection and make it a border to a piece from another collection. That was a rage about 10 years ago with fabricated rugs. Well, the other thing that you can also do with custom and Broadloom or anything like that is that if you want to, in your binding with the fabric, <coughs> you, oh, some carpet show, car car you can bring your own fabric. So if you have, or a canvas that you specifically want because it ties in to the outdoor furniture that you're having in the pool room, you, you can actually bring your own fabric. There are, th and that makes a custom, a broad loom piece custom where you are, you are picking right. the width of the fabric um, and this type of fabric. So there, there are options there. Again, just gonna get back to saying that if you're doing color, really know that you're getting into something that is one of the hardest things to do. Design is designing and then talking to a company that can implement your design and has amazing palms. And that means they already have stock and they know those colors and they have the quality control. Because no matter how great the design is, if the color comes out wrong, the rug is going to be wrong. Right. Um, and and I, I, I'd say the other thing we didn't talk about, nobody does, and is scale. Um, your biggest problem in, um, looking at design, maybe the scale of the design relative to the scaling of the room. And once you decide that it's a scaling problem, you can talk to your retailer, your uh, design uh, trade source, whatever, about scale. And then you're into a whole different world of um, a, a design approach. I mean, if you want something that scales on a three foot repeat or an endless repeat like the wallpaper behind us, it's very different than buying a, a, something that has a one inch repeat or a two inch repeat like you'd buy wallpaper in a, a, a home goods store. So scale has a big impact on everything you see. And so if you've got a lot of white in the rug and the colors uh, are less than 20% of the rug, you can use darker colors and they don't look dark. You put them all together and it'll look like a black rug. So anyway, it's color and design. We, it's our, the name of our company, we're into color and design. We love it. Go look at us online. You can dig in the um, in rug news and design. There's something over a thousand articles that are posted there and 3000 pictures of rug designs. Um, and I'm just going to add, if you do have any specific questions about custom, uh, I know a lot of people are watching on Facebook, so I might not be able to see those questions today. Um, I know Kim is running all the social media aspects today, and she might not be able to transition them. Please feel free to email us. We'd be happy to answer questions. Um, again, we've kept it short and simple because there's a lot of aspects to custom, so each project is going to be slightly different, and we would be happy to answer any questions if you need a source of um, to come to before, so you can turn around to your customer. Um, thank you for joining us for our third presentation on shopping with Sarah. You are able to find the first one on um, 
fiber and the second one on construction on the um, YouTube channels. And I believe we are getting them posted when our technical person comes back from summer on our website. But any questions, we'd be happy to share it. Thank you for joining us today. Have a wonderful weekend.